Edge at 11 starts now. Tonight on The Edge, a family's entire life gone, and now they're turning to the Fox 2 problem solvers. They left their belongings at a local storage facility, but got a major shock when their unit was completely empty. But the storage company says it was abandoned and scrappers were given free reign. I feel like a stranger in my own life now. $50,000 of, well, everything this young couple owned gone. Some stuff they can't buy back either. The teddy bear I had with my unborn baby's heartbeat on it. I mean, that's irreplaceable. 27 year old Haley Haynes is six months pregnant. You can't comprehend the stress that I've put this baby through. In June, her and her boyfriend moved to Clarkston from Phoenix, choosing public storage in Auburn Hills to hang on to their stuff for a couple months. They make it very easy to sign up online and it was just quick and you know, they did like a buy one, get one month. Assigned unit 507. They packed it with furniture, purses, paddle boards, and everything in between. On Tuesday, it was moving time. They got an apartment and were ready to fill it. But when they went to public storage, they noticed a new lock on their unit. They called the 800 number. And the property manager came down, and it was just craziness after that. We were we were able to open the unit um, and see that all of our stuff was gone. The property manager insisted their unit wasn't 507. It was 501. The numbers written in Sharpie. What did they tell you? That a scrapper disposed of the unit because it was considered abandoned. Three days and that's been about it from the company. Hey Jasmine, my name is Jessica Duke now. I'm a reporter with Fox 2 in Detroit. No humans at the facility and even the human on video wasn't much help. She said she wouldn't help us contact anyone with corporate. So again, the, the comment or statement would be just that, that you don't discuss the private details, correct? Correct. We had family members that had to open up lines of credit to get us furniture because we've been eating on the floor in this new apartment. The couple filed a police report. They're still unclear exactly what even happened, but are hoping maybe someone, those mysterious scrappers even, recognizes their stuff. I would just say, like, I hope you have it in your heart to just come forward in some way and just give us our stuff back, like give us our life back. We tried calling public storage corporate. They don't make it easy to get a hold of anybody. We did not hear back in time for this story. Now the couple, they're not sure if they'll sue, but right now they're kind of taking inventory of all their stuff. But gosh, that's gotta be Can devastating though to be able to rebuild. I mean, you trust that your stuff is going to be safe, then all of a sudden it's gone because of a mistake. So is there anything that they can do to be able to get compensated? Right now they're just taking inventory, trying to take care of the little baby. She's six months yeah. pregnant. Just unbelievable amount of stress for that couple. Well, hopefully something will change mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jessica. I took the uh, the detour and run around, and as I'm coming to Hoover, I hit a wave, and I became a boat at that point. It was quite the mess on several roads early this morning, an overnight deluge leaving parts of Metro Detroit underwater. Look at that! Some drivers flooding their cars as they tried to get through the flooded roads. And several neighborhoods were also impacted. At least three inches of rain fell within one hour in Warren's north end. In the area of Hoover and 12 Mile, 19 vehicles had to be towed from floodwaters. Well, thankfully, Taryn, the rain has moved out for the weekend. Yeah, get it out of there. We've had enough. But uh, we're hearing it's going to definitely be hot still. So that's good for those who are going to be maybe by the water, Stephanie. Yeah, for sure. It is going to be a toasty one. But luckily, the rain is going to move out. And now there are still a few lighter sprinkles down near the Ohio and Michigan state line. But as a whole, a lot of the widely scattered showers we saw today well to the south of us. This is area of low pressure finally moves its way eastbound. So we're not really going to see too much more. There might be a stray shower that we're seeing. Moving into parts of Wayne County, you can kind of see those dots there. Otherwise, additional lighter showers down near the Ohio and Michigan state line. So anything that's out there right now is going to be very isolated. Nothing that's going to add on too much more rain to what we have seen for a lot of spots. I don't think it's going to agitate any flooding that we saw today either. So good news there. Luckily, Saturday, we see reprieve from the rain. Cloud cover does move out. We see a lot of sunshine. So progress made on that front. It's going to be a hot one, though. Temperatures tonight will bottom out in the upper 60s. We're making our way towards 90 degrees tomorrow. Now, our humidity levels are still going to be sky high, so not super comfortable by any means. So that's going to make it feel that much hotter outside. Luckily, no rain chances in the mix during the day on Saturday. Heat indices here across southeast Michigan, mainly in the mid to upper 80s for a lot of spots in the lower 90s here across Detroit. So the heat will be on tomorrow for us here. 
across the metro area Sunday. Daytime highs will reach the upper 80s once again. Still a little humid, but I think a bit more manageable humidity wise on Sunday. And then you notice here by Wednesday of next week, our humidity levels begin to go down. Now with that too, our temps are going down. <coughs> Excuse me. We are looking at that scattered rain chance arriving during the day on Monday. Should be later on in the afternoon. And then more rain possibly arriving on Tuesday. With that, the seven day forecast, our numbers look to cool, especially Tuesday, Wednesday, into Thursday. Most of our daytime highs will be in the upper 70s to near 80 degrees with the potential for a few showers arriving Thursday and Friday of next week. Over to you guys. Thank you, Stephanie. We're getting some frightening new insight after a mass shooting on Detroit's east side last month. And tonight we're hearing the frantic 911 calls to, uh, that night. They were having a house party and somebody just shot at the house party. Somebody shoot me? Yes. Oh my God. Detroit police releasing more footage today of the moments shots rang out at a block party on the morning of July 7th. Two people were killed and 19 others wounded. Police are still trying to identify several persons of interest that walked up to the gathering right before shots were fired. The Homicide Task Force has several persons of interest. Unfortunately, a number of the individuals involved in this matter have elected not to cooperate with DPD investigators. Police did recover nine weapons. A $10,000 reward is being offered for information leading to arrests. Make sure you call Crime Stoppers if you know anything. 1-800-SPEAK-UP. And Detroit Police Chief James White is going back to the basics. He's patrolling the streets on a bicycle instead of behind the wheel. Chief White joined other officers for a ride through the city following their lead this time. It's a nice change of pace for the chief who says he doesn't get many of these opportunities. You cannot take this great community for granted. You got to continue to work with them. You have to be transparent. You're not always going to uh, have agreement from the community, but certainly you can seek understanding uh, and explain the department and some of the decisions we make. But, but most importantly, we are here to serve them. Chief White says people ask a bunch of questions about events that are going on. He adds that the police department is always looking for new officers to join the ranks. South American crime ring bandits strike again, this time in Troy. Five of them now under arrest for breaking into a home on Malay Drive near Rochester Road Thursday. Investigators say two of the men were wearing ski masks. The incident putting people in the area on high alert. It uh, seems like it's a sign of the times. Uh, Troy is a pretty uh, affluent area. Not shocked that they're here. Burglaries like these prompted the creation of a new task force late last year to target the thieves. Tonight, Michigan's Paul Whelan is a free man after nearly six years of Russian captivity. And he was freed, as you know, in a prisoner swap. Speaking with reporters late last night, Whelan said he's very appreciative of efforts to bring him home. I went on a two-week vacation, you know. The FSB grabbed me, said I was a spy. Uh, I'm a, uh, apparently a general in the Army, a secret agent for DIA. This is the, the nonsense narrative they came up with, and they, they just they wouldn't let it go. So, you know, this is how Putin runs his government. This is how Putin runs his country. Yeah, I'm glad I'm home. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never going back there again. I bet. Well, Whelan said he thanks everybody for their prayers and good wishes while he was imprisoned. He says he had thousands of letters coming in, so many that Russian officials stopped giving them to him. He was detained in Russia in 2018 and later convicted of espionage. Whelan will be debriefed in Texas before he heads home.